Hey, what it do with the business is. It is another week in the books with the On Deck TV show. I am Spike Lou. Man, holla at your boy Animal Brown. Animal underscore Brown if you're looking for me on all things social. Absolutely. And I am Spike Lou on them same social sites. Holla at your boy, boy. A.B., what up? Man, I can't call it, man. Uh, Slow weekend on the low. On the low. What for me? It really was. It really was. Oh, I thought you was talking about musically. Oh, yeah. I, I went to go play golf again this weekend, so yeah. slow weekends are good. That means I can go play golf, so I'm good. That's a very good, good point. Good. Fuck my allergies up. It fucked my allergies up bad, though, so I'm fighting through this Jordan flu game right now. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't going to hold there about it then. Um, it's some good shit in this one, man. We're going to talk your boy Lance on Riviera detailing the Jay-Z stabbing that Jay may or may not have actually done. Um, we're going to talk Adidas coming to terms with my boy, Yay. We're going to talk about how p- probable his bounce back is. And Dirk publicly calls out Gunna. He's made it official. He's calling him a snitch. We're going to say- talk what that means for Gunna's career. But first things first, the back and forth between DJ Envy and Rick Ross has been going on all weekend. They've got car show beef. Now, my question is simple. Ross has been Ross has included family members in this. Nice. And then your boy DJ Envy responded talking about his daughter, uh, talking about Ross's daughter and how she just had a baby. And so now Ross is a grand uh, granddad, a whole bunch of shit. Now that the families have been involved, is it still funny or have they gone too far? It's still funny. First and foremost, I want to be very clear that this is funny. I was surprised that people were reacting the way that they were to this. I was surprised that people were like, oh, this is lame. This is corny. Oh, it's only promo. Yeah, it is. Who cares? It's funny, dude. Like, why can't we just sit back and laugh at these two niggas just doing what they do? Like, Ross is a funny character. Envy, I don't really take as funny. I I, I respect the way that he's fighting back with the Officer Ricky shit. <laughs> I didn't expect it to go this far. I did not. And it was kind of cringeworthy at first when watching it. I'm like, uh, I don't know. But as I thought more about it, I mean, it looked like these niggas is having fun doing it. They promoting something that they love. Like, why are we or people mad saying, oh, this is too far. Oh, this is uh, petty. Oh, this is uh, lame. I've seen that a couple of times. But I mean, they they at the age where I don't expect anything to happen from this. I don't think that DJ Envy is going to get beat up by Rick Ross crew or vice versa. Now 50s involved. So it may get even funnier. <laughs> like, yeah, come on. With all of this good content. I'm here for it. I love it. I like it. I don't. And one of the main reasons, because I feel like that Envy is a smart brother. I feel like the Ross is a smart brother. They won't let this go too far. If they want to joke on each other's families, that's on them. Maybe they had a little side meeting to say and said, hey, we're going to do this to the max. And that's where it's at now. But I mean, they're getting promo for their car shows. People are talking about it. I like it. I don't hate it. What about what say you? I don't think it's too far at all. Yeah, no, this is obviously promo for the events that they have going on. We just saw Gilly go at Ross and Ross didn't say a word. Not because I don't think he's necessarily afraid of Gilly or anything, but he sees an opportunity with this Envy shit. Envy is on the number one morning hip hop syndicated show in radio. And so the fact that he's even going, he's getting free promo on the Breakfast Club right now, and that's just on BET. Talking about Rick Ross. <laughs> Revolt. That's just everywhere. So it, I think that's a very smart play for Ross to engage. And Envy got a car show coming up soon, too, in Memphis, if he didn't just have it, I believe. So that's a great promo for him. It just gives him an excuse to discuss his car show on, on said radio show without it looking like he's shoehorned it in. Very smart on both sides. At first, I thought the family stuff was a little bit cringe when Ross brought it up, but it, it was still actually funny. He's got some quotables <laughs> in these rants that are really funny. But you got to remember, Envy mm-hmm. has put his wife and kids on front. Like they, they got a whole podcast with 200 plus episodes about their relationship. They got a book. They went on a promo run about a bunch of shit. They talk about a bunch of shit on Breakfast Club. So their shit is out on front street, dude. Like the whole family off limits shit is null and void when they're all in the public eye. So, and he hasn't like specifically called out no kids. It's really more, he was like your girlfriend, your sons, all that shit is, yeah, that shit funny to me. Fuck that. Ross is hilarious. So, so I don't. So disrespectful. Super disrespectful. His wife and his girlfriend. That's funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> but that's funny though. It's man. funny, Fuck man. That. Yeah, I, it, I, I'm not taking it too seriously, especially if he's not. If Envy comes on dressed as a cop, that's letting me know he's not taking it seriously. That nigga went to Party City, got a whole cop outfit, dude. Oh, he's having fun with it? Then nobody else should have a problem, in my opinion. And I think he understands that his family is out here. He puts his wife out on everything. Like, you you open the door, bro, for that. And it, for better or for worse, if your family's in the public eye, they're going to be open to a bunch of shit. Scrutiny, praise and everything in between so those jokes gonna fly man they gonna catch strings it just is what it is so what would you say to the people who criticize envy for his approach that he took with Jesus and Meryl your favorite guys because he got mad at them for talking about his wife and he walked out on them that's true I think that was before she was in the public I know that was before this podcast and then all of this stuff though they didn't really start branding themselves as like a couple until maybe two or three years ago that was pretty old if I'm not mistaken because we ain't seen Dee Zemiro in two years period so that was pretty old I think that was pre <laughs> her being outside that's that's my only defense for that but that's a good point though. Petty little shot right there that was a for petty sure. little shot you know, um, I never heard of them niggas really go ahead that's funny what was the funniest video to you Man, come mop this marble was fucking hilarious, dude. And I don't niggas, know why niggas is playing with Rick Ross and this skit shit, bro. Like the, the nigga told his kids to come clean his pool, bro. Like a nigga said, I got a little pool over there for your girlfriend. Like all of Ross videos was funny. All of them. The the pickle board paddle cleaner. Like, bro, come on, bro. And nigga said, <laughs> nigga said your wife fake. He said your girlfriend faked orgasm for two years. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. How does he know that? Because they put it out here. They had a whole segment Thanks. on it, dude. I remember that, man. Like, boy, that's funny, dude. That, that's funny. It's 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 reminding me I, of I, uh Fifty and Kanye from back in the day when they did the the graduation mm -hmm. versus Curtis, and it was a win for both, dude. So like, Ross's car show is gonna go crazy. I saw he got the permit cleared, so that's gonna go up. And then DJ Envy's car shows, I've been to his. Those, those do pretty well, too. They're both for two different audiences because Ross's is a little more pricier. DJ Envy's a little more, you know, you know, user-friendly in terms of the pockets and shit. Yeah, DJ Envy's is more for the, like, the person that likes cars. DJ, and Ross is for, like, the car connoisseur. Like I'm sure. into this shit. Like I got a car. I do this. I want to know motherfuckers that got cars. Yeah. Yep. Like DJ Envy's for like the kids and the family and stuff like that. Like, oh, that car is nice. Yeah. Like raw shit is like, oh, how you build that? Like, yep. How you put that engine in there? All oh, that good shit. Facts. But man, shout out to them brothers, man. Keep dropping that good content in this boring ass time of hip hop right now. I'll take it all day, every day. I'm looking forward to it. Next up, we man, we got your man. You calling him the best rapper walking right now, which is crazy, but we'll see. Simba. Simba has a message for the aforementioned on previous shows, John Morant. As you all know, what happened with John Morant got suspended for right now during the summer by the Grizzlies for flashing the pistol on IG Live for the second time. So Simba addressed this in a freestyle. He kind of gave some of the blame to the court, to the culture. My question to you, A.B., is this freestyle and this message for John Morant cool or is it corny? Um, he used it as a rollout for his single that came out that same day that nobody is talking about. So in that instance, it didn't necessarily work. <laughs> um, because he dropped the song and he had it in he had the hashtag it's dropping at midnight and nobody gave a shit. They only cared about his freestyle because it was nice. And he was spitting, and he is nice. I think he's the best rapper out right now, especially out of this up and coming like new class of rappers. Um, he's super dope. So uh, I, I will say the message was cool, but using it as a rollout for a single that nobody cared about was corny. Uh, but at the end of the day, was he spitting? Absolutely. Hopefully, he got some more streams on his uh, project with DJ Drama. That was his last album. That shit was fire. And I really hope. He people talk about Simba more for having a hot song than just for his hot nine seven freestyles and random freestyles about what's going on in the news, latching on to what's trending. I hope he's not going to go like the King Los route to where he's like mm. 
people in the industry know he dope, but then that's kind of where it ends. And he'll, you know, he'll go on sway once a year and body something, and that's it. I want him to have actual records that make it to radio or that cross over or that at least get to the people that need to hear it and make him known more for that than the gimmicks. Cause you could argue this is a gimmick kind of like uh joiner Lucas, how he kind of gets down a little bit. So I don't want him to go that route. I want him to be known for his artistry cause he is a really dope artist. That's fair. I think it was a dope move. I think that the freestyle spoke to people uh, kind of gave, it wasn't being really judgmental of him, but it was still holding Ja accountable which I feel like that we need is as that was dope for the culture. Again, he was ripping it. I'm not as up on Simba as you are. So I really can't critique his, his status right now. I never really hear from him. Like I just seen this and clicked on him, of course, because Ja was popular. Mm -hmm. So I do agree with what you're saying and feel it as far as the comparison to your man's uh, Los. Yeah. Cause or Joanna Lucas, that's a good one too. Like you can't fall into those traps of I'm going to hit on what's popular now. And then when you get put some regular out or not even regular, just put your art out where you're addressing stuff that you usually address versus social commentary. People don't pay attention to it. It's a very th thin line that you need to walk, to walk, to be able to do that. So I'm anxious to see how he does it. Cause he does come off as he has plenty of skills. I haven't listened to the single again. I listened to the John Morant shit about four or five times, but I ain't listened to the single. Facts. That's on his team. That's on him. That's on them getting out there moving above the fray of oh we're gonna have a social commentary rapper that you don't want to fall into that lane i agree with that yeah and he's one of them dudes that kind of know he's nice and that could rub some people the wrong way like i get it like hip-hop is very there's a lot of bravado in it but if people don't really know you like that sometimes it's kind of like when t.i came out and called himself the king of the south that kind of rubbed people the wrong they're like nigga who is you? you ain't done nothing yet so like nigga that could turn some it's, people it's off simba saying he's the best rapper out He's saying no, nah, he just it's just how he the way he kind of he kind of he kind of got that TI like swag most. when he first came out. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And you kind of looking like, bro, you ain't got no records, bro. Like, relax. Like, you did a nice freestyle. He's from? Many... He from the Bay. Ah, uh, okay. He don't sound I mean, like he from the Bay. You know what I'm saying? Like, so people at the Bay kind of look at him like, you're not really representing us like that. Yeah, you know, it just it's tricky, man. But he it's nice like, though. Dumb nice. Yeah. He is. He he definitely can rap. I'll give him that one hundred percent. Stop the symbol, man. Best rapper alive. Next up, your man, Lil Dirk. He's on his promo run for his new album. Apparently he's changed. Remember, he's uh he just had the new single with J. Cole, trying to trying to kind of clean up the image a little bit. Well, he appeared on DJ Academics off the record podcast. Ah, and they got on the topic of snitching, tattletaling, whatever you want to Gunner. call it. Academics that asked him, was Gunner old. in that category of snitch? And he said, quote, LaDirk said, quote, I don't sit up here and play games, man. That man told. You should have went in there and kept your mouth closed. Um, he said, I never unfollowed him on Instagram. I don't know why I didn't. I just don't take Instagram and all that shit seriously. But if you're a rat, you're a rat. If you rewind the clip a little bit, I looked into the camera and I told you, if you a rat, I fucking hate you because I love Thug. End quote. Do you, we've been debating on whether Gunner is going to be able to pop back out and have that same um, cachet as he had before. How damning is this statement from Lil Durk? When it comes to people working with him, people like being comfortable, and I'm talking about established people. I ain't talking about up and coming people who can't really do nothing for Gunner other than pay him for a feature. I'm talking about people that you would work with where people would be like, oh, no, he's a professional. Like he was working with Thug and all the other people in the industry. When you have someone whose status is Lil Durk, who comes from that life, who the kids fuck with and love, it's really damning. It, it, it goes a long way to when people are going to buy new music or download stuff or see you posting on Instagram. I'm sure he's going to have posts filled with people criticizing him for his actions. But... That's the game you play when you get into this. Like the moment that you start saying, and we talked about this, man, the, the moment you start screaming YSL and, and this, that, and the third, and you have information that the police consider valuable and you're giving them that information, regardless of your involvement with the gang, you're around enough to know what they're looking for and what the police want. And you tell them then by Dirk standards. Absolutely, man. Like, 
Dirk doesn't have a questionable background. Like we all are pretty familiar with what he comes from and how they get down where he's at. So for him to say that it holds weight because he comes from that lifestyle, he's the same age, I feel like, as Gunn. Yeah. So it ain't an old nigga like me or you or some old nigga talking about a snitching code. It's somebody from his class of people that's like, nah, I can't fuck with him. So that is very damn. Um, so I agree. But we said that too. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I, we were like, yo, it's gonna be tough when the peers start turning their back, when you can't get that dark feature, when you can't get that metro beat. It's going to be tough sledding. I will say this, though. Um, I, I, if I had to call this big deal, little deal, no deal, I would say it's a little deal only because it's not Young Thug coming out and saying this. The day that Young Thug comes out, the, the day we get the audio of the phone call, the jail call nigga with Young Thug saying, yes, this nigga snitch, that's when it's a wrap. Because then, then everybody's going to be like, oh, that's what we've been waiting on. Dirt, I hold a little bit of weight with fans, but until people hear it from Thug, Gunner will have three fans left, and I don't know where they at. They're some white kids in Idaho. They're the only ones that won't give a fuck. I don't know if I agree with that, though, because yeah. I, I feel like if Dirk is saying that he's cool with Thug, once you call a nigga a snitch, you're like, it ain't no coming back from that. So for Dirk to go out on here and say it like I'm I'm considering him a rat or a snitch, even if Thug come out and be like, nah, that's my man. He wasn't involved like that. Like, Gunna can't take that shit back. I mean, uh, Dirk can't take that shit back. Like, that's one of those labels that's gonna roll with you forever. So you gotta be very sure before you call a nigga a snitch of that he is a snitch. And I feel like that Dirk, whether he's got information from Thug or people that's close to him. For him to be that confident on that big of a platform to be like, yeah, he's snitching. I think that that's going to hold as much weight as Thug saying it. Because Thug can't take this back now. Now that it's out here, a nigga like Dirk can say it. Like, Thug can't come and save today. It's over. Shit. Bro. He's the one person who can. He's the one person oh, who can. He can, bro. Because then niggas will start questioning Thug. They're going to ask him, like, how, how do you not consider that a snitch? Like, if you living by the same codes that we live by, you're supposed to be real as me, little dark, a little baby, or well, whoever, the one of the little niggas that you want to consider, I feel like they come from a similar generation, and there is no way that Thug is going to be able to explain it. Well, nah, like, look, bro, it ain't really snitching, because, like, them niggas ain't trying to hear that. Like, they came from that lifestyle just like he did. Like, you can explain that shit to a fan and be like, nah, y'all should consider this, that, and the third. But when you're talking about niggas who come from that life, Doug can't explain that. Well, I I will say, I, I was, um, and we talked off camera about this, I had, I met a guy that was involved in, in making jail content and all this type of shit. And he talked about the number of YSL members that are in Fulton County Jail locked up, dude. It's way deeper than this Rico charge that happened a year or two ago. Way deeper than that. He said they thick in there. These motherfuckers know that they are a gang, bro. It, it's there's nothing. It would, bro. It would be like it would be like Nipsey being on trial and they being like, "Is our Crips a gang?" <laughs> like, bro. Like they're asking a rhetorical question, dude. Like it's not. There's nothing. Him saying that yes, they are, nigga. That didn't lock up. One motherfucker, dude. Like that. That's what. That's what people. I think that's what his lawyer is trying to say. And I think if you understand the full gravity of the situation, like they're thick in jail, dude. It is more than twenty eight. They got twenty eight people on that Rico, nigga. There's more. There's more. Way more than twenty eight motherfuckers in there, bro. Claiming YSL right now. They've been in there. So it, this is not yeah. breaking news. Gunner did not tell them anything that they didn't already know for years now. So I, I think that's the whole part that. The people who are pro gunner are trying to explain, and I, that was new information I learned. I don't know nothing about that shit. So when it, when the homie was telling me that, I was like, "Oh, so they deep in there like that?" He was like, "Man, hell yeah!" He's like, "Come on, bro. They been that shit been a gang for a long time. That ain't like that ain't that ain't nothing they didn't know." <laughs> yeah, they knew that, and that's a good point that you bring up. However, that's the danger in it, though. That's for the motherfuckers who looking at it who are like, "Oh, I can throw this up and claim this and say this, that, and the third. And I won't get real repercussions from it. Unfortunately, Gunner was faced with real repercussions. So you're right, AB. Mm -hmm. They know this shit. Like the police ain't really asking you no questions that they don't know the answer to once right. it's this far down the road. So when they ask him, is why I sell a game for him to have to say yes, 
Because like you said, they got all of this evidence that it mm. didn't. But he was trying to be removed from the situation as to, well, I'm just an artist. Then you can't comment on the gang stuff. Mm. Like his best bet would have been like, I just work here, bro. Like I've heard rumors just like y'all have, but I can't confirm or deny it. I don't know. But they weren't willing to let him walk out of jail saying that. Well, so that's when the sl- that's when the slope gets slippery because they telling you now, bro. We already know this shit. Just like you said, we nope. know. Like it's a hundred of y'all motherfuckers in this jail, <laughs> but you want to get out. So are you willing to tell us that this own document, on record, is a gang, and we may call you to testify at some point in time? Are you willing to do that for your freedom? Oh, okay. Yeah, you are. All right, come on up, front row, right here, bro. Tell us what you know. And again, like you said, record on that camera. (laughs) Yeah, hit record. The little red button on, let's run it. Like, we want everybody to see this because that's the determinant, though. That's what the police use to keep a motherfucker like Gunner from doing this in the future. That's Mm -hmm. what they use in the show. Like, like, dog, we're going to get you regardless. You can not be a part of it. You ain't have to be a part of the shootout. You ain't have to be a part of the drug selling. But you was throwing it up. And if you were storing it up, we assume that you have information and your information is going to confirm what we already know. And that's going to help us in the court of law. Unfortunately for Gunner, he just got caught on that road. Like if, if he would have been able to be like, man, I'm just an artist, bro. I have no fucking clue. I don't know. He'd he still be locked up right now. He was too deep in it. Yeah, he'd be in jail right now. He'd be in jail right you now. You know what I'm saying? And I don't blame him at all because I ain't a part of that. Right. I don't blame it at all as a civilian to be like, nah, nigga, yeah, they was getting it in. <laughs> However, niggas that's a part of that life, like, yeah, bro, you tell it. Like, you can't do that, bro. You got to sit here. Just when it was good and you was throwing up YSL and slime life and getting bitches from it, bro, this is the bad part of it. So I, you I absolutely hate. The part that I hate about this the most is that no one, people are only fa- like fix, fixiliated. What's the word? Um, whatever fixated fixated there you go they are only yeah. fixated on this part at the end no one is talking about how everyone knew that gunner was not involved in none of that shit but they right. still brought him in just to put him in a corner to put him in this situation to begin with yeah, that is lost exactly. on everybody and i hate that they play that bait and switch game while they sit in the cut <laughs> and nigga and sit back with their feet up like look I told you it would work yeah. they're not even talking yep. about us dude <laughs> they're, they're fighting each other nigga I hate that that shit works it seems like it works every fucking time and you I do. hate that that's the age old thing that's the age old thing because some niggas are more into it than others and yeah. niggas that ain't into it as the other niggas they those are the niggas that the police want are yep. uh, you just halfway in are you willing to tell oh you gotta go home to your family oh you got a baby mama Oh, yep. your mom want to see you? Come, come sit down. Tell us yep. all about it. What's how to get him? Like it's, yep, it's trash. Yeah, man. Thoughts and prayers to all the people involved, man. I hope it works out for them, fellas. Uh, word out on the street, as you were saying, man. Thug having a rough time in there, man. Yeah, like, he having a really rough time. Uh, in the in the in the, he's in Cobb County. He ain't, ain't in for him. Right, so right, I think right. They moved him. But they say his trial Thoughts is. And prayers, everybody. I think they just not doing jury selection. Like that trial, it's gonna take forever, bro. It's gonna take forever, bro. And this said it's holding up the it's holding up the pipeline in jail. Yeah. And well, he's gonna be in jail this whole time. That's well sucks, man. Def- terrible situation, man. All right, next yeah, man's Timberland. He is going to create an AI startup. This is gonna be based off voices of specifically deceased rappers, maybe. Oh, I'm not oh, sure man. if that if I got that part of it right, but He's creating an AI startup to where you're going to be able to use rappers who have been, who are deceased. You're going to use their voices. Young Guru, Jay-Z's infamous engineer, shits on this. He recommends that people start trademarking their voices to mm-hmm. circumvent this. My question to you, is Timberland on to something? Yeah, this is interesting because remember when he did the Biggie shit, he said, I got something that's going to fix all of this. By I got something that fix all of this. This is what he was referring to. It's some company that will allow producers and artists to use voice filter technology and assume the voice of any musician dead or alive. He said it's going to really be a new way of creating and a new way of generating money with less cost. I'm already here. This is what I'm doing. I'm going to lead the way. What does this mean 
it's going to be a new way of creating and generating money with less cost. Like, are you going to use, are you going to do the vo little baby's voice without having to pay little baby for a feature? Like, I don't know. Like, what does this mean? I don't understand how I need more details of how you could use this in this way to make it beneficial for artists and producers, other than what I just laid out by using a nigga voice that you're not going to pay. I don't, I, I don't get it. I'm with guru on this. Um, and he said, quote, Timberland, I love you, my brother. You know I do, but this ain't it. This is dangerous at a basic level, and it's corny. Um, <laughs> now, it's corny. It's funny. I love right, you, but this funny. is corny as fuck. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> and, and now, this is where I draw the line, though, because when he did the Biggie thing, I thought he was in the studio board, and he just wanted to – somebody showed him the Biggie AI, he wanted him to do a song and have some fun with it as a one-off. But, nigga, you're not going to give me this Timberland Presents – uh, the Biggie duets, nigga, 2023. You're not going to give me that, though. I don't want that. Don't do that. I don't want the AI Biggie duets, dude. So that is, in fact, lame as hell if, he, if that's what he's trying to do. But I don't see the vision, dude. Do you see what's going on? Because if you do, please help me out. No. Um, <laughs> another part of that quote, a music legend who's no longer, well, excuse me, Timberland explained that the filter can also help mainstream artists brainstorm collaborations before inv investing resources in them. Mm, well, that now, is okay, now that's okay, though. No, that's, that's okay. I mean, that's what, that's what the, what, what do you call those songs? The reference tracks? Yeah, that's what those are, right? Yeah, but they don't sound the same, though. You could, now, so hypothetically, if you had a single right now, if you rapped and you said, do, you said, hey, bro, do we get Usher or do we get Chris Brown on this? Then you can have a nigga do the hook in Usher voice and you can nigga do the hook in Chris Brown and you'd be like, which one of these sound better? And then go call the nigga that you want. Okay, now that's different. That I could see. That that's actually that could work. Uh, so I guess in order to make it correct, it would have to be a really pricey item, right? Probably like so. It would have to be something to uh, plug in that costs. It's rather expensive, because like you said, if that part of it works, the other part that you don't want is what you said in the beginning. Though I don't yeah. want DJ this dick. <laughs> like coming up with all the new like Jay Z featuring Tupac and Jeezy and Biggie and it's one nigga rapping it then wrote all of it because he think it's dope. So I don't want to see that at all. But, but yeah, I mean the other part of it, like the Chris Brown the reference tracks, I guess it's got to be one of those things like within the music industry that's had to be gatekept, like with auto tune. Like some people know how to use it, use it well. Some people just completely fuck it up and made it bad for hip hop for a while. But when you know how to use it, it's good. So I, I would look at it as one of these, one of those things. As long as niggas is not trying to exclude an artist and just strictly just use their voice. If it's for reference tracks, if it's for research purposes, things of that nature, then I, I could see it as a business person. However, as a fan, if it's one nigga sitting in his basement, even if he's cold, even if he's yeah. the best at it, if he just, Hitting old well new Jeezy and just using the voice. I still don't want to hear that because it ain't Jeezy. It's just his voice. Yeah. I think here here's one situation I just thought of where you were talking that it makes sense. If I'm a songwriter and I got this tech, oh yeah. And I'm and I'm a singer, I'm a singer songwriter, bro. And I'm like, I'm trying to sell some songs to Beyonce. I'm trying to sell some songs to Chris Brown. And I could use their voice. This nigga, this is how you would sound over this. That's fire. Now you cooking. Facts. Would you feel a type of way as that sing singer if someone comes to you and they already done done that? Did that take a little bit of the creativity away for you though? No. Cause Cause imagine sometimes... a nigga come to us. Imagine a nigga come to us, right? Mm -hmm. He like, man, I got this dope ass podcast idea for you and AB, bro. Like, I, I already got 10 episodes done through the AI voice. Y'all check it out. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'd be like kind of like I don't know, bro. Like you already didn't got the shit out now. Like you already didn't done it. You wouldn't feel the type of way about that. Now, it, at first, maybe, but it's gonna take some getting used to. But once, yeah. once it happens, once you get that first hit off of it, hey, nigga, where the AI niggas at with with, with the hooks? Like you are gonna be looking for them, dude. And you'll get you like with any they technology, bro. It's, yeah. it's 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 it, it's like that with any technology. Technology always feels weird at first. It always feels strange, and then you get used to it. Like it just, it just is what it is. But after a while, niggas gonna be, it's gonna be the norm. Watch now, that's gonna be used for niggas gonna be doing reference tracks, and they are gonna be able to sell their songs a whole lot better 
Cause nigga, I I had hove on the hook, and now it. you can hear how it's. I ain't got to sell it. You, you can hear imagine it. Imagine it, right? Yeah, that's, that's killing. That's one hundred percent true. Um, Thanks. more court talk, man. Your boy Fetty Wap has been locked up on uh, drug charges for the last year or so. He's learned his fate this week. His lawyer is telling him is telling the judge that he was only selling drugs because the pandemic slowed up the show money, quarantine money got tight. He had to resort to selling some some weed here and there. Um, sentencing is this week. What are the chances that, in your opinion, that the judge buys this and he gets off light? Well, first and foremost, the chances that this dude will be fired as my lawyer would be 100%. <laughs> nigga, what are you talking? Like, nigga, there are a million excuses to go out and sell drugs. Nigga, none of them are good. And this ain't a good one, bro. Like, nigga... Get a PPP loan like the rest of the motherfuckers did, bro. Like, deal with that versus trying to go out here and have a, a major weed, weed conspiracy ring. So, no, nah, man, the judge, there, there's no judge probably on earth that's going to buy this. I, I do not see them getting off. I cannot even believe that his lawyer presented this as a defense and saying, hey, man, the pandemic slowed up this money. So, you know, we had to get out here and get it. Like, nigga, is you serious? <laughs> like, What? Fetty Wap, man, unfortunately for him, man, it looked like he's gonna be doing some time. If this is the this is the thought process <laughs> and when what came up. I ain't really look into it though and see what role he played. I don't know if he was just like the mastermind of it or if he was just like a part of some niggas that were selling some weed. I haven't really checked into that. But again, if this is his defense, man, like good luck to him, bro. Jesus. Yeah, I'm I'm telling my lawyer, nigga, you supposed to say I wasn't me, mother. What do we do? What is this, dude? Nigga, what weed? Nigga, what are you talking about? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> nigga, I thought we talked about this, nigga. I wasn't there. What are you talking about? Um, but it it stems from an October 2021 arrest. He was uh he pleaded he did plead guilty. So he pleaded guilty to conspiracy to distribute at least 500 grams of cocaine. Um trap queen shit he's seeking a five-year sentence that's what the law that's what his lawyer is trying to get him um the feds trying to give him more than that they said after they investigated him they they under they uncovered 16 keys of cocaine actually um uh, so, jesus christ yeah oh, um so, it was his what did they what do you mean discovered like did they find it in his house yeah no they so they stopped him that. that nigga was on his way to rolling loud when they got him and um with a brick in the car? No, no, no. They said they said he was using <laughs> oh, UPS. No, no, he didn't have him on him, oh, but they shit. said he yeah. is using That's USPS true. trucks to smuggle the drugs. And in their investigation, they uncovered 16 keys of coke. Hmm. May 24th. Uh, we'll know his fate. This is the day that this drops. We'll know what happens. And so will he. I think they uh like the about. feds are trying to give him 87 months to 108 months. So yeah. 87 Damn, months. How long is that? that? Hold on. It's about seven years. Oof. And this nigga. Seven, eight years. How many years is that? Eight. Nine. nine. 108 is nine. And they're trying to get him five. Five years. So he's going to do at least 80% of that. Yeah. Like, at least, at the very least, he's going to do three years. Time served. He's been in there a year and a half. Yeah, but he ain't gonna get that. He gonna get the the the. If they if they found all sixteen of them bricks. He looking at that cell. So he yeah. been in there a year and a half. We talking about another four and a half, five years. Damn, Fetty Wap. Hey, that pan, niggas Jeez. don't talk about how that quarantine affected niggas, dog. Like niggas was check the check out here, bro. Yeah, hey, for the people that didn't take advantage of that PPP loan, it was fucked up. One hundred percent, man. But, <laughs> It still ain't it still ain't back right now either. No. I heard something just off on a tangent for a second. You know, the inflation and stuff that people are talking about. You know that they're saying executives, people at the top of the food chain of corporations, their income is increased by 30% from pandemic to now because mm -hmm. of the higher prices. Mm -hmm. It's not really due to supply chain shortages, like they were saying at first. They just wanted to float it out there and see could they make them high prices stick. And yeah. they're sticking. So they making more money than they made in the last 20, 30 years. That's because that, that's because once you get used to paying, it, all it takes is one or two of your everyday normal things to actually legitimately be uh -huh. affected by the shortages. And everybody else can raise it because you get used to paying high prices. 
And so that's why that that's why the people say the rich get richer and the poor get poor is because the rich have assets. And so in inflation, mm -hmm. assets mean you get paid more. Than it just means me and you are paying more for the asset that they own. Well, if you got. don't own assets, you're just coming out of pocket more and you're not getting anything more back. Money. So that's that's why the gap gets mm -hmm. bigger. That's how it works. Yeah, they evaporate in the middle class, man. But exactly, financial podcast or something coming soon, man. You guys be on the lookout for it. We talk it all day. For sure. After that, your man Lance Unch Rivera, he says, newsflash here, Jay Z did not stab him. It was somebody <laughs> that was with him all of these years later. <laughs> AB, when you heard this, what'd you think? I busted out laughing because this is one of those like infamous. We all know the Kit Kat Club, this, that, thug. Jay has mentioned this a couple of times. He detailed it in his decoded book. It's like one of the biggest, like, myths. Well, I ain't going to say myth, but mythological, whatever you want to call it, situations, man. Apparently, Jay was mad at Un. Un was a, was a big uh, business partner back in the day, but right. then started his own label, signed yeah. Cameron. So he was heavy in the game, super heavy in the game in the 90s early 2000s and jay was pissed because he said un was leaking was bootlegging and leaking in volume three and so uh, allegedly jay said they you know they had a little incident or whatever and dude accused jay of stabbing him years later he goes on vlad and says jay wasn't the one who stabbed him it was actually somebody that was with jay um so that's kind of i don't know if this like puts a damper on things but I don't, nobody really gave a fuck like it does un not listen to nas he ain't heard either do you not know exactly. who this? And your man stabbed Un and made him take the blame, bro. We know this. Vlad, <laughs> you should know this. Like, all y'all niggas should know this. This is documented, bro. Like, you know that. Nigga. This is old news, and that, <laughs> Yeah, bro. I guess, yeah. I, I Again, no, I said this a long time ago with Ethan, man. We knew Jay didn't do this. And it ain't taking nothing away from Jay questioning the gangster or something. But I just couldn't imagine the nigga stabbing somebody in the club at, <laughs> at his big, he was, he was Jay Z then. Like, Facts. You know what I'm saying it was before Blueprint, but he was still Jay Z. So that I would actually so. make him look. I like would actually look at him like an idiot had he done that. And he just coming off that Volume Two, Volume Three, finna drop Big Pimp. That he know Big Pimping on there. Like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, you got to smash on that motherfucker. I wonder now, who the, his man was just stabbed on. <laughs> Like what? That hey, I will say this conversation leaving in the car had to be so funny. Like, bro, what was you stabbing the nigga, bro? He was just like, bro, he was gonna beat him up, nigga. He just bootlegged this shit, bro. I ain't need to poke him up, bro. God damn. <laughs> I got this whole album finna come out, nigga. You running the spot hot. <laughs> Jesus. Hey, I will say this though. Un Un is telling some good stories though. He he told real quick. He? he told about the pot story. Uh, how Pac knew who set him up at um at Quad Studios. He said before they uh -huh. went to the studio, Pac was on the phone arguing with a nigga. Like, man, nigga, fuck you. Nigga, suck my dick. Nigga, fuck you. You know what I'm saying? He talking like greasy to him. And like, nigga, yeah. we finna go to the studio in a little bit, bitch ass. Nigga, fuck you. Come see me there, nigga. And so like, nigga, the niggas are in the room with Pac like, but like, <laughs> they kind of like chilling, smoking or whatever. Like, man, who, you, like, nigga, who, did, who, did, who this nigga argue with? Pac, who you argue with, man? God, that nigga always, always yelling at somebody. And nigga, Pac said, man, some nigga named Jimmy Henchman, man. Nigga, they said, Jimmy who? <laughs> he said, you know who the fuck that is, nigga? What are you talking about? Why are you telling nigga where we go? One side and everything. Like, whoa, whoa, bro. Like, who? And, and they, they said, nigga, Pac said. Corner waiting on him to come. Hey, that nigga said, that nigga said, hey man, that ain't a nigga you really want to play with. Like, he was like, damn, for real? He like, man, he said, Pac said, man, you think we're gonna need guns? He said, You think I'm gonna need a gun? He said, nigga, we all gonna need guns, nigga. <laughs> so, that's, <laughs> so that's why Pac had a gun on Jimmy. him at the Quad City thing, because his his folks was in town from Atlanta. And so he went and got a gun from them yeah. and they went to Quad Studios, but they saw C's at the back. You know, the famous story is C saw him walking yeah, at the yeah. balcony. And that's when he let his guard down because he thought Jimmy Hinchman was with Big and C's, and that was his man. He was like, oh, okay, it was a misunderstanding. I'll smooth it over with them niggas. So he let his guard down. That's how they got to jump on him in the lobby. Mm. It's a good ass story. I'm gonna be real. I'll check that out. I ain't never heard no interview from Lance. Me neither. Yeah, He'll so never talk. Uh oh All shit. Alrighty. Is this me? Yes. Next up, man. Uh damn, more court talk. So the final uh accused person in the XXL 
murder trial finally got sentenced. The driver was sentenced to seven years and he is credited for five years served. He will be out in a little bit less than two measly years. Uh, he is the co-defendant. He turned on his co-defendants, by the way, and he was the driver, man. Is this fair or foul? Is this the nigga that you said pointed out the, the cameras that's in the parking lot? Yep. Was that another nigga? It was another oh. nigga. Yeah, this fair. I mean, it's similar to what we said about gun. <laughs> like, the first one to go in there and tell is going to get the lightest sentence. So it's similar to that. But, yeah, he changed his mind at the last minute, made a mistake, had to do five years for it or seven years for it. Um, usually, like, he got lucky. Like, yep. I'm going to keep it real, which he got lucky. Maybe they didn't have enough evidence on those other two niggas and needed his testimony. But yep. usually even the driver, all y'all niggas is going to jail for yep. life to accomplish his murder. So I won't praise him or anything of that nature because, I mean, you put yourself in that situation, but he definitely got lucky and ought to be thanking his fucking stars that he ain't having to serve that 25 with an L behind the murder of that young man. So, yeah, he, this is the one, he was the driver. He said he got, they gave him 5,000 of the money. They stole 50 bands from him. The other three people that were involved split it 15, 15, 15. They gave him five. He folded immediately when the police came and got, got them. He was afraid. He was like, nigga, I'm telling he told on everybody. He told the whole thing, and the and the judge said they gave him that sentence because he seemed like he actually had remorse for the situation. Remember, the other cast was in in there blowing kisses at the mama and winking, and they were doing they were kind of wilding a little bit. This nigga was like, you know, in there kind of just on some like, man, look, look, I I told these niggas it was cameras in there, and they still did it. So whatever, I mean, you know, he's he still had to do what he had to do, but. Two years is nuts, though. But I know he lucky than, but he lucky than them. He got twenty years probation, though, which is nuts. Yeah, damn. Yep, twenty years probation. No, yeah, he finna be walking it straight and narrow. His life probably changed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, that's crazy, insane. All right, man. Thoughts and prayers to the ex Extension's family, man. For, for sure. Losing the people. Lastly, all these commands. We got Adidas. People were wondering how this situation was going to play out. They finally came to terms with Kanye West. They're going to re release the remaining Yeezys. Ye is going to get a 15% cut of the profit. This is be, should be stupid money. Is this the boost? See what you did there. That Ye needs to get back in the spotlight. Let's go, Ye, my nigga, back. Yes. Oh, yeah. No, he's not. Nigga, look, open your it's Adidas over. apps, nigga. They got Yeezy all on that shit. Now we back. All the shoes finna sell out. It's finna go up. Adidas is gonna renegotiate the contract at the end of the year, and they're gonna do a whole new rollout for a new three or four year deal once they see that nobody gives a shit anymore and all they wanted was the product. Nobody cares. Nobody cared to begin with. They just try to act like they cared. Once that bottom line goes Stop, from red bro. to green, Nigga, they're going to finesse and finagle a way to make this long term. You heard it here first. And so, yes, he will be back. Yes, they will cut the big dog check. Let's go, yay. Yeezys all 2023 and beyond. Let's fucking go. Corporations don't care. People still do. Um, there's still going to be people protesting this. You know that. There's still those people out there. Well, I don't. When you say get back in the spotlight, like what does that mean for him? Do you still like see music and shit coming from him? Yeah, like I'm yeah. saying, being more public, uh, coming out and not the scandal not preceding him anymore. Like he'll be able to start pumping the shoes. He'll be able to start doing his normal, hopping out, being interviewed without saying wild shit, taking the high road on the goofy questions and shit. I think this is the beginning of the rebrand. It could be. Nah, I don't see that happening. Why would he rebrand? He already didn't like he's he's drawing his line in the sand. Nah, I'm over here with the crazy folks. I'm never coming back to what normal society is, bro. I don't even know what you're hoping for, but he always over on the other side now. I don't see him coming back. Um, I would like to see how it plays out from the sense of the factories and the stuff that he wants to build. Mm. I want to see if that money goes towards that. I would definitely love like a fact checked on that two, three years okay. from now. Cause he's going to get bread from this. Like these shoes are going to sell. Like you said that I'm not disputing that, 
but I know he was talking big boy ownership shit. I want to see how that looks when Adidas is coming to him with that bag and saying, hey, keep doing what you've been doing versus spend your capital and try to make this into what you wanted to make. I'm very interested to see that decision and how it plays out because I I think the yay's in a new stage, man. Like, I feel like that that, all of that shit that he got in trouble for last time should have really put an end to that stage of his career. Now we're talking about the stage where you are like building the Yeezy factories and you are providing jobs because you've got, you're, you're about to get that revenue that you were looking for. So what does that plan look like playing out? Or was it just bullshit? And if it was, I mean, it's who it's Kanye. What, what do you expect? But if it wasn't, I'd love to see how that plays out. Like he should be in, I, I want to know if you, you agree, like he in the Tyler Perry phase now. I done, mm. done all of this. Now I'm building my production studio, bro. I ain't got to Ooh. do no Madea movies no more because I'm putting all the content out from right here. So I ain't got to do that no more with Adidas. I got the plug right here in this land I got in Wyoming. That's what I expect. See, that's where it gets tricky because you're right. Had he stuck to the script, that could be the play. He could have the factory and he can manufacture other brands. Brands could lease that to manufacture yeah, their right, shit. Yeah. Like that's Tyler Perry. What, what Tyler Perry do, Marvel leases his shit. Exactly. That's the play. Exactly. You're right. He don't have the he don't have the fucking Wyoming shit no more. That's the problem. And like, his name is too high. No more. No. He ain't got that land in a while. What happened to that? He got rid of that, bro. He put that up for that's sale crazy. about two years ago. That's but 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 crazy. to your point, that's what he. That's the. That's why I'm still confused at all of this shit. But that's the play. He would have been up, nigga. I would have had Skechers using my shit, nigga. I would have had. <laughs> The up, been uppest taxing. of up, nigga. <laughs> and they trying to make manufacturing important in America, too. Yep. Oh, yeah, he been up. He got tax know, cuts from that shit. I didn't know he had that land. <laughs> he blew yeah, it, man. I'm hot at him. Know. But he back now, though. Let's get it. Um, Wins and losses. Wins and losses, man. It's a W or L. Jay-Z and Beyonce allegedly pay cash for a $200 million <laughs> crib in California. Crazy. It's supposed to be the highest, most expensive house in the state. Is this a win or a loss? It's a big boy W, nigga. <laughs> Cash? I wonder do people think when you read that, like, do people think that it was not a wire transfer? Do they think that J&B went and got the stacks, <laughs> 200 million in cash, and pulled up with the armor truck? <laughs> How many people you think thought that? Some people definitely thought that, for sure. Some people thought that, yeah. This is That's crazy. crazy. Big boy W. I ain't gonna lie though. I saw the house and I was like, 200 mil for this? It didn't look like 200 mil. It didn't it look, I needed to look like Iron Man house, bro. Like, it got to look crazy. I and it was hard. I need to see the pictures. It wasn't, it wasn't like, like I needed to like, if it ain't got, a, if it ain't got a Swiss house on, then it ain't really doing nothing. I'm gonna be real. If they just bought it though, they probably gotta do their upgrades. You know how it is when you just get the crib. You know I'm not saying? for real. I'm not dropping two hundred mil, and I got to upgrade it. Cause <laughs> <laughs> you're not a billionaire, nigga. That's what I'm saying. These niggas like that's like buying a two hundred thousand dollar crib for them, and now I got to upgrade. Like they finna put that shit in there, nigga. <laughs> Marvel gonna use that crib for the next Iron Man house and everything. If I know hey, Jay, they, Jay finna put that shit in they, there. They better had a play for people to rent that out though. Two hundred mil is insane, bro. Oh, one hundred percent. That's fucking nuts, bro. Yeah. Uh, you can buy like an yeah, island, bro. You can buy an island. Fuck that. I mean, well, but then you gotta like even you know the, the shuck behind that though. Like you gotta get you can't really build on them islands. Like you gotta have a construction company that's willing to move the material out there right because if it, it's uh, an island you yeah. got to ship the shit out there some way you know what i'm saying like so you got to have the boats and all the infrastructure and build pipes and all that shit for plumbing so yeah. buying an island is cool but it's a whole lot more to go to it fair enough man Last next up. i was looking that up <laughs> next up man your boy o3 greedo fresh out of jail he publicly apologized to j cole on twitter for calling him trash back in the day. For those of you who remember, in 2018, he was on Vlad. And he said, I don't like anything from J. Cole. I didn't know this nigga was dropping an album or anything. I just saw some news and said, J. Cole, I hate this nigga music. I don't hate him personally. I wouldn't beat him up or none. I just think his music is trash. Fast forward the other day, he said, Dear J. Cole, I was 103% inaccurate about you being trash. 
you kill every fucking feature. So I like to take my 2018 statements back. Jake Holden's top tier. Win or loss? It just took him. Just took him five years to realize that. That's a W. He finally come around to it. So I I, I give it to him. He could have stood on that shit and looked it really stupid. <laughs> but you know, he sees where the mistake was made. And two, from 2018 to 2023, J. Cole has upped his game. Like he Thanks. was doing his shit in 18. True. However, I ain't seen a lot of that. Like the people that are still holding on to that Jay J. Cole makes sleep music. No, no. They looking really crazy right now. The people that really try to double down on that because it ain't nothing in the last two years that you heard and you were like, man, that nigga, that put me to sleep. Like that nigga been tearing everything down. So hey, he killed that summer walk Oh my God. Yeah. He killed and it that. was just like, he killed that. And it felt like a personal phone call. It like did. it was just like some shit. Like, like he hit her up. Oh, you got an album coming here. Let me give you some advice and, and just give you my thoughts on some shit and murdered it. Nigga. <laughs> Like, so, yeah, 03 Greedo, W for him for realizing it, but W to Cole for, like, continuously stepping his game up, man. Agreed. And 2018, he had just came off Four Your Eyes Only. So if you heard that album, then I can yeah, understand you saying he was trash. So that wasn't really nothing. <laughs> um, he but was it's definitely in a different bag. Real quick, WRL, your boy Yo Gotti, man, he is fed up with 4-2 Doug's situation, who is currently locked up. Uh, they just raided his cell. There's a lot going on with Young Doug. Gotti says, I got two million for any lawyer that can get him out. Win or a loss. That man said he is cooking his food or reheating his food with shower water. In what? Jail. He's cutting this to, to heat up the food. He's having to cut the shower on hot. I guess he put it in a bag and let it sit in that. I don't know how the fuck it works, but it's a level of poverty that I never want to fucking experience, man. So I understand your God, he probably listening to this man on the phone, knowing that like a lot of niggas not built for prison, prison, uh -huh. like being locked up like that. So yeah, man, I can understand God. He wanted to protect his investment because even if he in there a while, like he might come out fucked up, man, like have a whole mm -hmm. different mindset from the little nigga that went in there, little turnt nigga. Like, so, yeah, you don't want him in there that long, man. It ain't no good situation for a little nigga like Doug being in jail, bro. Even though he yeah. got people and shit, it's still a situation. Man. First of all, how hot is the fucking water? That's number one. Number two, <laughs> he was sentenced to a year just a couple of weeks ago. Um, so he'll serve a year behind bars, but then we'll have three years of supervised release once he does get out. Um, so it's a tricky situation. I understand Gotti. He's trying to protect his investment. And I mean, plus he he just probably just don't want to see his man cooking hot dogs in the shower. So I like, I get it, but I don't know them two meals. Like, oh, I don't know how that geez. works. Whoa. Yeah, I know. Pause that. But cooking hot dogs in the shower is that's nuts. nuts. Yeah, that's that's wild. <laughs> <laughs> cooking the glizzies in jail is insane. That's the only thing I could think of at the moment. That's crazy. Oh, um, but yeah, man, free for two dog, man. You gotta stay out of trouble, man. Gotti gotta put the Gotti got it the same way you talk about how um nigga, I'm if I'm boosy or if I'm nigga John Morant dad, like you yeah. coming with me every day to work, nigga. He gotta have the detail on four two dog when he get out like that. Cause dude can't seem to shake trouble, nice. bro. And he's talented, man. You don't want to see him yeah. go out like that. And he a talented little dude, right? Exactly. For sure. You keep calling him little, man. Up. We know he's short, man. God damn. You getting disrespectful with the littles. He believe. He's very short. That like, nigga's short. Nigga he might be the shortest short. rapper ever, bro. Um, Facts. He right there with Bushwick Bill. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, man, real they quick. Right on Decker together, of the bro. Week, Bushwick Bill is hilarious. Um, shout out to our guy, D-Dub, man. We're going to YouTube. He said, hey, you both are right about clean content. It could be clean, but still hard or even happy rap. The happy rap lane is in need of a comeback. Jazzy Jeff, Fresh Prince, Kid and Play, etc. I still listen to it and use it to share my love of hip hop with my young children. Great show per usual. I agree a thousand percent. The clean content needs to make a comeback just to give some type of balance, man. That's all I'm asking. Yeah, that way you ain't got to listen to. Uh, they were just playing tip drill for the NBA finals. <laughs> for lack of clean or music to be able to plug. I get the tip drill thing and somebody really got that off by getting that in there. <laughs> but yeah, if it was more clean clean stuff, you wouldn't have to have tip drill playing at the commercial of the finals. Oh, excuse me, the playoffs. 
Oh, shit. Yeah. That's a fact. What you got to put me on, man? Man, so I went to go play golf Sunday. One of the cats that I play with is a musician, and he travels. Um, He said he's been to Nashville a lot. And I was like, so who you listen to? And ironically, he was able to put me on some Nashville rappers that I had never heard of before. He's a white guy named Matt. Okay. He told me about Ron Obasi. Have you heard of Ron Obasi? That's a negative. You ever heard of him? Solid, dude. It's really, okay. really solid. It's Ron, R-O-N, and of course, and then Obasi, O-B-A-S-I. He has an EP, Notes on a Scale 3. It has four songs. It came out in May. Uh, May 17th, uh, actually, like last week. I like it. It's a solid listen, man. I really would. People should check it out. Tell us what you think about it. I won't put too much gas on it no to set him up for failure. But yeah, I think that you guys will definitely fuck with this. Ron Obasi, Nashville's own, showing some hometown love. Wish that man much success. Shout out to Ron, man. Um, real quick, I went to a an award show taping. It was pretty cool. My put on is to check it out when it shows live. Man, it's the Black Music Honors. Um, it was really dope. A pretty good show, man. If you into like the throwback artist, Missy Elliott was there and she was honored. I'd never seen Missy Elliott in person. She might be the smallest human being I've ever seen. Um, she might be smaller than 42 Dub. I don't believe it. Maybe. I ain't know took her. I ain't know she was small like that. But I didn't know either. I was like, wow. Like she's tiny, bro. Like that shit was crazy. But it had a really good time. Good throwback performances. Especially like not like late late nineties R and B like heyday shit. It was good, man. I had a good time. So check it out. Yeah. It's on TV somewhere, and that's how they're able to make these types of events happen. Is they get decent ratings, and then the, those sponsors and shit come back so they can keep going, man. They can honor all of the um all of the music people that came, you know, before us and all of our heyday, man. So giving them flowers, making sure they get their respect. I'm here for it, man. It was a good time. So y'all check out the Black Music Honors when it come on TV. Um, uh, anything else before we get out of here? Absolutely. Nah, man, that's pretty much it. We appreciate you guys joining us 10 years strong. Yes, sir, man. Till the next time, we out.